This is Io. It's the third largest moon of Jupiter, and the fourth largest in the solar system, roughly similar in size to our own moon. Io is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter, so called because all four moons were discovered by Galileo Galilei over two nights on the 7th and 8th of January 1610, making these the first non-terrestrial moons to be discovered. Just looking at Io, and you can tell this is a pretty unique moon. The jaundice hue of the Ionian surface is polka dotted with red and black, and with hardly an impact crater in sight, this indicates that something is covering and recovering the surface. But what exactly? Lava from volcanoes and it's sulphur from these volcanic eruptions that dye the moon's surface yellow and create these intense red rings around the bigger volcanoes. Io is so volcanic, it's predicted there are up to 400 volcanoes scattered across the surface, making it the perfect place to go and burn a Jedi. Now these volcanoes aren't like the lava-spewing mountains that you and I are familiar with, but instead, almost all volcanism on Io takes place in these fiery hell pits known as Patera. They're kind of similar to the lava lakes you'd find here on Earth, only much bigger. A typical patera is between 50 to 100 kilometers across, a kilometer deep, and constantly erupting. How do we know this? Because we've witnessed these eruptions. For example, during its mission to Jupiter in the late 90s, the Galileo probe performed several close flybys of Io. In April 1997, Galileo snapped this close-up of Io's surface, before zooming off to go look at the other moons of Jupiter. When it returned later that year in September, it had a look at the same bit of Io's surface, and BAM! An eruption had occurred, with the fallout creating this 400 km wide dark spot around the Pill and Patera. Now you're probably thinking, oh man, that would have been an amazing eruption to see. Well, on the way back to Io, Galileo captured this 120 km high plume spewing from the Patera's location. That is amazing. Ever since the Voyager mission first visited this mustard-shaded moon back in 1979, Io's insanely high volcanic activity has fascinated scientists and geologists alike. How could it not? For the first time, we had undeniable evidence of lava flows and an actual eruption on a distant, geologically active moon. After decades of ongoing study, and due to the sheer abundance of recorded events, three types of volcanic eruptions have been identified on Io. There's intra-Patera eruptions, which take place inside the Patera, resulting in lava lakes, flow-dominated eruptions, where lava erupts at a generally steady rate, spilling out of the Patera and shaping the surrounding terrain. These eruptions often last years, even decades. And, everyone's favourite, explosion-dominated eruptions, short, violent outbursts that are sometimes so powerful they can be observed here on Earth. Let me reiterate that. These eruptions are so intense that we can see them on a moon that is, on average, 700 million kilometers away from Earth. Now, these explosion-dominated eruptions are very much like the ones here you see on Earth, the mesmerizing kind that spew out fountains of red-hot lava. However, they're just a tad bigger on Io. Take a look at this image of the Tavash de Patera, captured by Galileo in November 1999. In this image, you can see a lava curtain from an explosive eruption. Now, while this lava curtain may not look all that impressive at first, Bear in mind, this image was taken from space at a distance of 17,000 kilometers, and the curtain spans 27 kilometers, shooting lava 1,500 meters into the sky, which is twice the height of the Burj Khalifa. When Galileo returned to this site six months later, the curtain had closed on this eruption, leaving behind a smoky splodge, and proving these explosive events are indeed short-lived. But just a few dozen kilometers to the left, and a brand new eruption was seen taking place. That's how active this moon is. Now out of these three eruptions, I personally find the most interesting to be flow-dominated eruptions. Why? Because they cause plumes. These magnificent umbrellas of sulphur that reach heights of 100 kilometers, sometimes 300 kilometers. At first glance, it looks like lava is being shot way up into the atmosphere, but in fact, these plumes are mostly gas and dust. So if it's not an explosion, what causes these plumes? Well, during the flow eruptions, when a patera is full and lava spills out onto the cold surface, the immense heat of the molten lava instantly vaporizes the sulfur dioxide frost on the ground, shooting that material into the sky at speeds of one kilometer a second. Using the Tavashta patera as an example once again, these incredible images were captured by New Horizons in 2007 as the probe approached Io. Taken over the course of eight minutes, the plume erupting from the Tavash de Patera reached an immense height of 330 kilometers. And you're only looking at the top bit of this plume as well. The Patera is 130 kilometers below the horizon in these images. 
In fact, this is such a stunning example of a volcanic plume, you probably didn't notice the other two plumes erupting in this incredible footage. So, at this point you're probably thinking, how can this distant alien world be so volcanically active? The answer? Tidal forces, the gravitational pull of Jupiter and the other surrounding moons. Now, a quick crash course on what are tidal forces? The gravitational pull of our own moon creates a slight bulge in the Earth, causing the oceans to rise and fall as the Earth rotates on its axis, with the water rising the closer it gets to the moon. Likewise, the gravitational pull of the Earth also creates a bulge on the near side of the moon. Now, this bulge is only half a metre high, but considering the moon is made of solid rock, that's still quite impressive. Back to Io, and while it orbits Jupiter at roughly the same distance the moon does around the Earth, and has a pretty similar mass to our own moon, the tidal forces on Io are 20,000 times stronger than those experienced here in the Earth-Moon system. Why? Well, for a start, Jupiter is 320 times heavier than the Earth. Okay, yeah, that's a fair one. And unlike our moon, Io experiences the gravitational pull from other close-by moons. The tidal forces from the other Galilean moons are amplified by what is called orbital resonance. For every four orbits Io completes around Jupiter, the fellow Galilean moon Europa completes two orbits, and Ganymede completes just one. This means the gravitational pull on the surface of Io is constantly changing. Most of the time, there is only the pull of Jupiter. Then occasionally, either Europa or Ganymede will show up, adding to these tidal forces, and every now and then, all three moons will align, exerting the greatest tidal pull on Io. And it's this constantly changing strength in the tidal forces that cause Io to stretch and relax. This creates a huge amount of friction inside Io. And what does friction cause? Heat. And in the case of Io, there's enough frictional heat to melt the interior, creating molten rock, which, you guessed it, constantly erupts and flows across the Ionian surface. There are so many incredible images of Io, all taken by different missions, allowing us to see how these volcanoes have shaped the surface. And while NASA's proposed Io Volcano Observer mission was rejected in favour of going to Venus, twice. The Juno mission has been extended for several years, with many close-ups and flybys of Io plotted on its route. Who knows what this awe-inspiring moon will look like when we return in just a few years.